Route model binding is a very simple but very useful technique when we're creating our routes and our controllers. In the last lesson, we talked about having a CRUD style application where we would have to edit users. What route model binding does is it saves us a few lines in pretty much every function in order to show a certain resource. To demonstrate, let's say we have a routes.php file and we have a user profile page. This will correspond to the site controller get profile function. And in this function, we could just pass in the user variable here. And then normally we would go in and use some extra lines to find the user. But what route model binding allows us to do is we can type hint that directly into our function parameters. In this case, we say that this user is going to be a user object. And that's exactly what we want. So by type hinting it, route model binding is binding this object to this variable and giving us the entire user object. It saves a lot of time and a few lines of code here and there, which actually adds up to be a lot. And our applications are a lot cleaner since we know exactly what is being type hinted and our objects are automatically injected for us into our functions. To demonstrate this, this is going to take a little bit of setup. We're going to need migrations. We're going to need to seed our database and we're going to need some data. Since we're already using the PHP built-in server, we can use SQLite to be our database since it doesn't need much setup and it doesn't require a full server behind it. Let's open up our migrations files, database, migrations, users table. Laravel already comes with a users migration. We're going to add one thing here. Let's add table, string, username. Make sure these are unique. Save that. Last thing, we'll go into factories. We need to add username here. So we'll do username, faker, username. That means our migrations and our model factories are ready to go so we can seed our application. In database seeder, we'll just create factory app user class. We'll create 10. Last thing, we need to set up SQLite to make sure our database works in our env file. We're normally using MySQL. Let's delete all of this, call out SQLite in the database folder, create a new file for database.sqlite. How do we know it's going to call this database.sqlite when we're running all these? If you go look in config database, scroll down to the SQLite section, it actually lets us know that we're using database SQLite in the database path. So I just want to make sure that there's no magic going around here. It's all configured. It's all set up from our .env file. This means we're ready to create our migrations and our database back in Artisan. PHP Artisan migrate. This creates our users table and our password resets table since those migrations came with Laravel. We will run the seeder and that creates 10 users for us. To make sure that these users actually exist in our database, we'll clear this PHP Artisan Tinker app user get. And this gets all of the users in our database. And here we have 10. We have username, email, name. Perfect. That is all of the data that we need to actually show off route model binding. We'll close all these things out back into our routes.php file. Let's delete these dashboard routes. We won't need those anymore. And we will create the route that we were talking about in that example we showed earlier. Route get at user function user. And we'll dump and die the user. Let's delete these two as well. In our home page. We're going to pass our users out, users, app, user, get, dd, the users. Now for a normal application, you wouldn't really do that since you would go through, create a view file and do a for each loop and show those in a nice format. Here, we just want to make sure that we can get a user and pass in their ID. Oh, it looks like 
Laravel is trying to connect with MySQL still. Now, this is a really simple fix. What happens sometimes if we're using the PHP built-in server is that it pulls in all of those environment variables when it gets instantiated. Since we changed it after in our .env file, what we have to do really quickly is restart our server. PHP artisan serve back over, refresh that, and we'll get our collection of users. Let's open up a new tab, localhost 8000 at 1. And this should call the 1, right? And this is the ID for our user, and this is the user route that we created in routes.php. Back in our routes.php, let's close the sidebar, we're DDing the user. Now normally what we would do is we would say user is equal to app user find by the ID user, and then we can DD the user, which is the user object. With route model binding, we can type hint here app user, and that will let Laravel know that we want to inject this user model, go find the user with the user ID. And that did the same exact job. It dumped the user model from at one. This doesn't make the most sense since we don't want our URL to be at their user ID. We want this to be at username. Let's find her username really quickly. Username Gregoria25. Now this is the URL that we want. Refresh. Nothing really worked there since we were looking for the ID and we were giving it the username. Now what we can do here is user is equal to app user where username is equal to user. And find the first one. This should return our user object again. It does. And now this is where we start to see the benefit of route model binding is because this line is starting to get a little bit longer than the find by ID. This can get a little bit hairy, especially when you get into more detailed finds like post slugs or things like that. Now, how do we route model bind with a username instead of the ID? We can quickly change that in the user model. We can open app user.php create a new function down at the bottom here, public function get route key name. Here we'll return username. This tells Laravel, hey, when we want to type hint the user model into one of our routes, go looking for the username. Go back, type hint once again, app user, and this will find by username. Let's try that again with the one. It won't work since it's looking for username. Really simple tool, just type it directly into your route and you will get the object that you want.